Tom Downey here for NBA Now. A quick programming note before we get into today's show. The live version of everything going on around NBA free agency here at Chat Sports. We'll be back again tomorrow with Chase Sr. Unless we do not get to 318,000 subscribers, then the bosses tell me no show at all. We are 77 away. That is it. And I have all the confidence in the world that at least 77 of you watching today's show are not subscribed. So if you want free NBA videos all day, every day, and live shows, hit that big red button and subscribe right now. Today's NBA Now is presented by Aura. They offer all-in-one online safety for you and or your whole family. And they're giving you, the watchers of NBA Now, a free 14-day trial. Cancel at any time when you head over to Aura.com slash chat sports. We begin today's show with the latest on Kevin Durant as things remain very slow moving on that standpoint. The Nets per hoops hype are not getting close to the offers that they expect, are looking for, and are demanding in a potential Kevin Durant trade. The Nets, understandably, it is Kevin Durant, even if he is older, it's still KD after all. They want a King's Ransom for him, and that is especially true after the Rudy Gobert trade. But so far, those offers have not yet materialized, and there is no end in sight for Durant. Maybe there's more traction around training camp, but... Things are quiet as we enter the mid part of July. Here's what Michael, is it Scoto, Scotto? I've heard it pronounced both ways, uh, of Hoops Hype wrote on Durant. There's skepticism around the league that a Durant trade will happen soon as talks could linger into training camp. Currently, the Nets are seeking a combination of the best assets for teams, including any star player or players, rising young players with all star potential, and substantial unprotected. Draft picks and pick swaps were applicable for Durant, but those trade packages aren't currently materializing. As part of this rather long, in-depth piece, there were six different teams who were linked and discussed as potential Durant and Sanders, so we'll hang out here for a little bit. Suns and Heat will group together. They would need a third or fourth team to reach that goal involving Durant in terms of the asking price. The Raptors don't want to move on from Scotty Barnes, and there's also been some apparent hesitation to move on from OG and Inobi, even though Pascal Siakam, Gary Trent could be involved. I'd trade Obi to get Durant, or OG to get Durant along with Siakam if I were the Raptors. Pelicans have the assets, but apparently the small market doesn't want to push for Durant, and there's also doubts about whether Durant would have played when would have played in New Orleans, but then again, it's not like he has all the power anymore. The Clippers apparently like both Kawhi and George together, although if you include Paul George, maybe a deal could be worked out there. And, of course, the Warriors, who apparently don't want to give up on their young assets, Poole, Kaminga, Wiseman, Moody, etc. And there are the previously discussed complications about an Andrew Wiggins trade because the Nets can't take him on directly thanks to the presence of Ben Simmons and weird NBA contract chaos. Durant, when healthy, has been one of the best NBA players in his time in the NBA, and it's easy to understand why the Nets have such a high asking price for him because he is a very high-end, impactful player in terms of just being one of, if not top three, top five, whatever, best players in the NBA. 55 games last year, almost 30 points per game and continues to be a dynamic shooter despite his immense size. There are plenty of teams who, of course, have interest in Durant, even if the offers aren't there. So what team do you think makes the most sense for Kevin Durant? This is the pinned comment on today's video. If the ad break comes here on YouTube, perfect timing. Head down there and let me know. Report from the New York Daily News also says this, that Durant and his agent, Rich Kleiman, are finally back in contact with the organization after Durant had seemingly gone quiet. With the way the trade market has gone so far for Durant, I don't know if you can fully rule him out simply running it back in Brooklyn, potentially alongside Kyrie Irving. The, uh, I'm still going to call them trade conspiracies, have wondered if maybe Durant demanded a trade in an effort to get Kyrie an extension since those two appear to be close. The Nets have a rather interesting roster right now with Durant, Irving, Seth Curry, but 
Ben Simmons, bench guys, and Joe Harris. Maybe maybe TJ Warren even starts. Uncertainty at the center spot. Hopefully Nick Claxton takes that next step forward. But I keep coming back to what happened with Kobe Bryant all those years ago. Goes on air, demands a trade from the Lakers, and they ended up keeping him in the end. With four years left on Durant's deal, something similar could happen. So make your predictions for me. Will the Nets actually trade away at Kevin Durant's? There's a chance, I think, that they end up keeping him. But sound off for me in the comments section. Y for yes or N for no. Today's show is powered by Aura. They offer financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, online and device security for you and your whole family. And because you're watching NBA now, if you head over to Aura.com slash chat sports, they're going to give you a free 14-day trial. Links in the comments section and in the description, by the way. You do more online than ever these days. And Aura does even more to keep you guys safe because if you're like most people, if your phone gets compromised, you're in trouble. 14-day free trial at Aura.com slash chat sports. That link is once again in the comments section and in the description of today's video. From one net star to the other one, Kyrie Irving, another report out of Hoop Sipes where it appears to be quote-unquote Lakers or busts, which is, we'll get into that more in depth here in a little bit. The Mavs reportedly were not interested in adding Kevin Durant. There were the early conflicting, or er, adding Irving, excuse me, uh, conflicting reports on if the Mavs and Sixers had interest. Seems like the answer was no, as Irving's value very much appears to be at an all-time low. Here's the report. Quote, at least one member of the Mavs organization believes there's any coach Irving would want to play for, it would be Jason Kidd, his idol growing up as a Nets fan. The Nets call the Mavericks to, to gauge their interest level in an Irving trade. League sources told Hoops Hype. Dallas, however, didn't reciprocate just reciprocate, excuse me, much interest in trading for Irvin. Which is kind of crazy when, hey, this 27-6 and six player is available and we won't take that much back for him. I think it's indicative of just how far Irving's stock has fallen. Talked about this on Sunday and many of you were like, you can't make that ridiculous offer for Kyrie Irving if you're the Lakers. Russell Westbrook in a first? That's not fair. It's not fair, but it's also reflective, because I think you guys are right, of how low the value is. The Nets don't get better with that trade, but there appears to be no real market right now for a player who, when he's not doing the weird Kyrie Irving stuff, is top 10, top 15 in the NBA. The Mavs, in a normal world, should be falling over themselves to acquire Kyrie Irving, but nobody is right now. So a question for you now, where will Kyrie Irving play this upcoming year, 2022 slash 2023? Type L for the Lakers or type in O for other. Make your predictions for me right now in the comments section. Summer League games continue, so I want to look at some more standouts from Monday's action. Depending on when you watch this, there, of course, will be some Tuesday games going on. First up, Quentin Grimes, the Knicks player who I know Marshall is a very big fan of, even though Marshall's not paying attention to me right now. 24 points, 4 boards, an assist, 3 steals. Not the best 3-point shooting effort, was just 2 of 8 from deep. But Grimes taking a step forward this year, looking like a key part of that Knicks rebuilding process. An older-ish player, but a first-round pick last year nonetheless, is Trey Murphy III, the forward from the Pelicans, who went off against the Hawks. 30 points, six boards, had an assist as well. Three of six from three-point range. I don't think Murphy has nearly the same name recognition as some of the other recent first-round picks, but I was quite impressed by him against the Hawks. I'm cheating with this third one. It's just the Rockets youngsters as Houston, they're rebuilding, which could look brilliant depending on what happens with those Nets first-round picks. Off to a good start with some of their additions as of late. How about the play from Tari Eason, the wingman, LSU? He was awesome against the Spurs. And I know the Spurs are not playing most of their good players, so it's really first-round NBA draft picks against, like, eh, goodish college players. But still, 22 points, 11 boards, 3 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks. The same number for Jabari Smith, who... Was off to a bit of a slower start in Summer League, now getting going again. Nine boards as well. And even Josh Christopher, almost a forgotten first-round pick, although, as producer Jack likes to call him, ASU's finest. 18 points, three boards, three assists. Lots of steals and blocks, in part because 
Summer League is a bit of a turnover happy fest when it comes to uh, comes to the, the quality of play, which is fine. It's the Summer League after all. We're focused on the Monday games. Of course, there were Sunday, Saturday, lots of other games as well. But overall, beyond just last night, who is your top Summer League winner so far? Drop that player name for me right now in the comments section. By definition, I think the biggest winner last night was Matt Ryan. He, of not the, the Falcons quarterback, the basketball player. He hit the game-winning shot, half a second left, game-winning three-pointer to deliver the Celtics a victory. 23 points in total, 6 of 11 from three-point range. Not that bad for a, a former DoorDash driver. Matt Ryan doing everything possible to prove he is worthy of a roster spot in some capacity for Boston. And finally, the most divisive player in chat sports history, that is Chet Holmgren, the Thunder big man. We were deprived of a, ch stop clapping, it's not that serious. We were deprived of a Holmgren versus Bancaro matchup against the, in the Thunder Magic game because Bancaro didn't play. He's been a baller, by the way, in the games he has played. Holmgren in the end had 16 points, 10 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 blocks. Solid numbers. I have seen, again, a little bit heavy on the turnover side of things, but, eh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's the Summer League. There's simply always going to be a bunch of turnovers. But I think a lot of those early round picks from Holmgren to Bancaro to Jabari a little bit more lately, Keegan Murray's been balling, Jade Nivey, those are, ooh, Benedict Matherin, those early picks have looked like early picks so far in the Summer League. If you haven't already, please make sure you guys subscribe. If you like our Summer League coverage, Keep an eye on the channel. We will do more full-fledged Summer League winners and losers in the future.